Hello again, this is Alex from MasterChastTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, March 31st, 2017. So again, this week stocks moved higher and they're very close to fresh all-time highs. In fact, NASDAQ 100 to QQQ did hit all-time high. But now we have somewhat uh, small um, minor divergences. Uh, and we'll look at those. Small caps are outperforming the large caps. New York Stock Exchange advanced <clears throat> decline line hit fresh all-time highs. And there are some pockets of strength, namely in the discretionary and foreign stocks. The high-yield junk bond ETFs also gained together with stocks. Uh, however, the investment-grade bonds are not dropping. So we'll see uh, whether or not this means there is some sort of a um, defensive posture possibly. Uh, then we'll look at dollar which has gained for the week versus various other currencies and uh, specifically euro, Swedish krona and we'll look at Mexican peso as well. Oil looks like it found support and moved higher and we'll look at XLE with a little bit more detail as it became uh, extremely oversold and additionally extremely uncorrelated to the general market. And we'll finish off with natural gas. All right, let's start with S&P 500 ETF SPY. So uh, this is a bullish chart and I don't think, I mean, I, I, I cannot find anything bearish about this chart, basically. Um, all time highs here just in the beginning of March. Since then, we've been sort of pulling back from all time highs. Uh, we had this finally big red candlestick and this was a 1% move and this is what like a first 1% down move since God knows when. So definitely a bullish chart. Now we followed through a little bit lower and found support at the 50 day moving average and now we're rallying again. Whether or not we'll break to fresh all time highs remains to be seen. Um, for S&P 500, the advanced decline lines did not yet hit fresh all time highs. So there is no bullish divergence. From, for some other charts, uh, this did occur. Uh, generally speaking, I don't see any major issues with this chart. Um, I still think this is definitely a bullish chart. Here's a slightly longer term time frame uh, for S&P 500 also. Here on this chart, we have a bunch of advanced decline, uh, a bunch of market breadth indicators, namely percentage of stocks above the 20, the 50, and the 200 day exponential moving averages. For now, we're seeing a normal pullback, and we see a normal pullback in those indicators. Additionally, there is a bullish percent index here, and it is also a normal pullback um, within, I think, a bigger uptrend. So um, this indicator here is market breadth index and it is firmly bullish. It is at reading at five, which is a maximum possible reading. Uh, this is a proprietary uh, indicator. Here's a weekly time frame for the same chart, S&P 500. We had a triangle consolidation here. Uh, then we had a breakout, threshold time highs, found resistance at the uh, resistance one yearly pivot point and then pulled back. Now we're again uh, surging and looks like it's a very strong bullish looking candle here. Um, so fresh highs are very much possible. Um, but you know in, in this market, in, in this business anything is possible. So it's also possible we will uh, maybe we'll continue lower and possibly even retest a breakout above this levels here. But for now, I still think this is a bullish chart and I would not short it anytime soon. In fact, here's the reason why I don't short uh, clearly bullish charts. And this is QQQ. And I, if you listen to my previous videos, I repeatedly warned uh, investors and traders, especially new traders, not to short this chart. Um, for better or for worse, now we have retail ETFs, inverse retail ETFs, where you can easily short, uh, you know, major indices. And QQQ is no exception. I repeatedly warned not to short this chart uh, here back in December, again here in, um, in, in, in December, in January. Even this big red candlestick 
uh, really means nothing. Uh, this was just a pullback and looks like bulls immediately came in. And what is this? This is a fresh all-time high. Additionally, there is a, these are fresh all-time highs on the advanced decline lines. So this is, again, showing a clearly bullish picture in the, um, in the high beta universe. And this is as good for the market as it's going to get. Um, here are the, some of the other market breadth indicators for QQQ that I'm following. And here we have a little bit of a uh, negative divergence here, bearish divergence. You can see the percentage of stocks above 200, percentage of stocks above 50, and even percentage of stocks above, uh, I meant 20 here, and even the percentage of stocks above 200 day exponential moving average have dropped somewhat. I mean, this is very high reading at 89, so it's now at 81. So this is a little bit of a bearish divergence because we have a fresh high in the in in, in the index, but we have um, lower lows in the indicators. Um, whether they will play out and uh, and and QQQ will follow through lower again remains to be seen. This kind of divergences are notorious for not working out. Here's IWM, the Russell 2000. Here we had some divergences of a similar nature. Um, advanced decline lines were moving lower, but now I think we're actually have a bullish divergence, if anything, because you can see that advanced decline line made a higher high here, and here's the advanced decline volume line above uh, the mid-March uh, intermediate high here, and the actual index has not yet made a higher high. So this, to me, this looks like a bullish divergence, and we could easily break higher and continue to fresh all-time highs. Um, on the longer term a chart of IWM, there is still a little bit of a divergence going on from December. Uh, you can see we're making lower highs in the indicators, in the market breadth indicators. Uh, and also in the momentum indicator, I'm not a big fan of momentum indicator divergences, uh, so I don't normally even look at those. But if you so inclined, there was a little bit of a divergence. Um, however, my bigger problem is this, and this is percentage of stocks above the 200-day exponential moving average. And you can see we in December we were at 85 here right now in March we're at 69 and change and we're approaching all-time high so you can see there's a little bit of a divergence there so again whether or not this will play out uh, remains to be seen uh, here's the Dow Jones industrial average uh, not much has changed uh, or not much has uh, no money no major difference between this chart and s p 500 they're almost interchangeable um, we're still waiting for fresh highs for advanced decline lines but uh, this still to me is a clearly a bullish chart and finally here is new york stock exchange composite index nya this one you cannot trade it, so it's for informational purposes only, but advanced decline line did hit fresh all-time highs just this Friday, so this is uh, again showing a bullish posture. Um, and uh, percentage of stocks about the 200 and a bullish percent index, well, it's it's still within definitely within a bullish realm. I think if we get to like 40s or 30s, then I'll still start to worry about those. Finally, here is the perf chart, performance chart uh, for the past five days for the week. And you can see a clear old performance by the small caps above the um, other, um, above the large caps. So um, this, to me, this looks good. Um, I think it's a good thing that uh, small caps outperform uh, because they are more volatile and they are definitely domestically oriented. Finally, here is XLY, consumer discretionary, and this is as, as economically sensitive as it gets, uh, and these are all-time highs. So I think this is uh, also very much a bullish chart. Additionally, this is confirmed by the advanced decline line, 
has not yet been confirmed by the advanced decline volume. Um, came very close here at 5909 in February, but did not yet break to fresh high. So volume is lagging a little bit, but not dramatically. So we'll see if this actually means anything. Finally, uh, European equities uh, and other uh, in non-United States equities did um, also quite well this week, uh, and these are fresh highs uh, for 52-week highs for European ETF, and this has to do with a dollar. Um, I think it was under pressure by the you know sometime during the week. Uh, actually, it was under pressure during this month here, at the dollar and. Uh, you know, VGK, I think, uh, took advantage of it and moved higher. But in general, there is not that much correlation between um, fun, between stocks and uh, the dollar. So I would take that with a grain of salt. So uh, in any case, uh, overall, I think stocks are very much bullish. I think if we do get a pullback, uh, there is now a decent support here for S&P 500 at 231 and change. If we don't hold there, I think there is decent support uh, at the previous breakout level from um, f February, uh, January, February of this year. Okay, moving on to the bond universe. Here's J and K, high yield bond fund. As I repeatedly said before, I lumped this one together most mostly with stocks, uh, generally because of very high correlation between junk bonds and stocks. So this is looking very good. Uh, we had a orderly pullback surge. Another pullback. We found support in exactly the same level, and again surge. So. This is looking quite good, actually, and I think we could easily see fresh highs for JNK. By the way, this is an, this is an adjusted chart. In other words, the div it is ad adjusted for dividends. If you take out the dividends, the chart will look quite different. Uh, the same thing goes here. This is, again, an, an a adjusted chart, and this week, look at this gain for junk bonds uh, over 1%. So this is, again, looking quite good for stocks and you can see correlation are very high between junk bonds and stocks so uh, as far as junk bonds are concerned i think this is a a, a good thing and stocks again are uh, moving higher together with junk bonds um, here's uh, investment grade corporate bonds and this one is a significantly different story again this is a uh, adjusted chart so we had a drop here in November with a gap. Uh, then eventually, we found support here in November, December. Attempted to rally, rejection. Attempted to rally, another rejection. A significant attempt at the rally, and even attempted a breakout. And we attempted to fill a gap here again. It was rejected, the 200-day moving average. But then. Here, I thought, uh oh, looks like we're breaking support from previous lows at 116. But this looks to me like a bear trap now, because um, it looks like we broke below support, stopped, and then just surged. So maybe this is a bear trap, and maybe bonds are going to just trade sideways and then break to uh, break to fresh highs, and then possibly even close the gap here. Again, as I mentioned before, LQD, I cannot make a case that this is a bearish chart. To me, this is a weekly uh, adjusted chart, and you can see that uh, in February, March of uh, 2016, we broke above uh, 2015 highs. So this is a breakout of fresh highs, continued to fresh highs, um, topped out here at around 122, pulled back, and we pulled exactly to the breakout level. So this is right now like a normal pullback. And we found support exactly at the breakout level, moved higher, and now we're even making a higher low. So, um, again, I, I cannot make a case that this is a bearish chart. We can easily break above this highs here from uh, February uh, surge. So, I still think this, this is a bullish chart, I think, still. Here's TLT. This one I had a more difficult time with. Uh, in fact, let me show it to you right now. Uh, this is a 20-year plus treasury bond fund, also uh, adjusted chart. 
these are 52 week lows these are all time highs which is completely unraveled went to 52 week lows so that's what threw me off i think is that these are 52 week lows um, but it looks like we are finding support and we're actually rallying so if we look at a more zoomed in chart here on the daily time frame you can see now clear resistance um, being formed and we again came up to this resistance just this monday and we kind of pulled back from it but we're not pulling back in a dramatic manner for example here we have a dramatic manner it's a gap here we had kind of like a red candlestick and then a drop attempt to run higher another red candlestick and you know we had significant i call it significant selling pressure but here i just don't see that much of selling pressure just yet i mean it could still materialize and we can just continue lower but the other option is we don't and we continue higher and this high, this this unfilled gap still looms large for tlt um now this is the inverse basically of tlt this is um 30 year treasury bond yield so as tlt was uh, dropping the yield was rising and this is a absolutely normal um so here in march um, of this year we hit 52 week highs for tyx which is a 30 year um, yield and we pulled back so um could this be now a bullish uh, chart for tyx possibly um but i still think that um longer term and i'm talking about really long term um if i go to monthly and this is monthly tyx going back to uh, maybe going back 40 years you can still make a case that this is in a bear market in other words um yields are still dropping and i just want to go ahead and zoom in here on the past couple of years um, and i want to show what i mean here oops sorry so um here's what i wanted to show is that it is still quite unclear um, whether or not tyx has entered a bear market um, or other bull market in other words the bonds are no longer going to be gaining so here's tyx and this is a monthly chart so each of those sticks is one month worth of activity i still think that we need to see a monthly close above uh 2015 june july highs here um, before we draw any kind of major conclusions about um, the longer term fate of bonds um, right now it's looking better and better but again i think we we need to see a close above uh, let's say 32.75 or so uh, before i definitely say that we're in a um, bull market for uh, yield in other words bear market for bonds Okay, let's move on to the forex universe and this is us dollar on the daily time frame so this week we made a fresh lower low here and then bounced and then rallied so what i noticed is that this, this is a quite a common occurrence um, the powers that may be quite often do this and they so we have a low here at 99.25 from december so what do they do what do you normally do you put your stop below the previous low and many traders put it exactly just a couple of cents below it so what do other traders do is they look for those stops they hunt for them so they there it is they found those stops 99.19 just a few cents below it uh, grabbed grab those stops and rallied same thing happened here it looks like we grabbed the stops from this lows here and again we rallied so still i i still think that this is a bullish chart and um long term is definitely a bullish chart i mean this is a multi-year highest so 
uh, let's look at the weekly time frame for US dollar and this one is looking even better than the daily time frame so the reason why I still think that this is a bullish chart is we had a breakout here in 2014 fresh multi-year highs two-year consolidation finally a breakout here in November uh, above previous highs and you know we made multi-year highs now we, we're having more or less an order like an orderly pullback uh, a rally another pullback now we have what I think is a bullish engulfing candle on the weekly chart I mean this is also in an outside reversal so you can have uh, the real body of the candle is engulfing the previous real body and additionally the entire range is engulfing the previous range so this is both bullish engulfing and outside reversal we need a little bit of follow through next week preferably with a close above this week's high to confirm this but this is looking rather rather bullish in fact let's look at euro and euro is the main force behind weak uh, strength in the dollar weakness in euro so again where do you where do you set your stops you set your stops above previous highs well in this case it was we didn't even get to previous high in february but here we did you know right here in march uh just a few days ago the powers may be they grabbed those stops above previous high pushed the prices lower so this is to them this is a successful trade to whoever grabbed those stops up here uh, euro versus US dollar on the weekly time frame um, this candle right here from this week it's quite possibly the most bearish candle out there um, it has both characteristic of a rejection of a shooting star like rejection in other words um, higher prices were rejected here and selling commenced additionally the close was near the low of the uh, week in this case and this is a weekly chart so um, and then again this is also a possible outside reversal because if we get a follow-through this will be a confirmed outside reversal and these are multi-year lows so uh, we have several things that are working here we have previous broken support acting as resistance and the broken support in fact let me go back the broken support was from October lows here this is a broken support right there it is now acting as resistance um, and we have clearly a bearish security and this is a bearish and this is a bearish looking chart so multi-year lows um, if we get a follow-through we could easily retest the very least at the very least the february lows but possibly even the december november lows um, yeah this is not looking good for euro honestly uh, here's another component of uh, euro uh, us dollar index uh, the swedish krona and big white candlestick also bullish engulfing type of candlestick outside reversal kind of candlestick so again this one already broke out similar to dxy uh, break breakout pullback consolidation finally another surge so it looks like we're surging higher in other words us dollar is winning this battle uh, versus the swedish krona here's finally i wanted to take a look at us dollar versus mexican peso now these are all-time highs here at 22 uh, 22 pesos per us dollar so if you're traveling to mexico it's definitely a good thing for you guys for americans rather uh, because you can buy a lot of uh, goods uh, or services there but uh, so for now i'm treating us dollar versus mexican peso still as a bullish security and we're approaching previous lows and here are the previous lows so um, normally you know the way i for example trade is i use the average true range and this is an indicator called atr you can it's it's a built-in indicator so right now the atr and this is a weekly chart by the way 
So right now the ATR for this uh, chart is uh, 0 0.63. So in other words, on average, uh, within the week, uh, for one week, um, this security moves 63, uh, 631 points uh, on average. In other words, you know, more or less it moves that much. So we can see that we're about there right now. We're about 60 one points away from previous lows and here's what i wanted to show uh, you know there is no volume here um, within the structures.com but here if you go to trading view you can actually get uh, forex volume now forex volume is not the same volume as um, as in regular securities this is a transaction volume so here you can see uh, last week, or rather the week before that, we had a spike in volume right there. And in fact, we're having higher than normal volume here uh, for the past, you know, few weeks. You can see this is quite a significantly high volume. So I think what's happening here is we're seeing buying. So now we see, you know, um, I guess uh, traders coming in and buying at these levels. Um, the reason being is that because we are about one to two average true range away from the previous lows. And so here's what I wanted to show you. What I mean by that, uh, this is a custom script, but if you're interested, I can let you have it. Uh, um, this is this is a channel. Uh, it's kind of like a Keltner channel, I guess, but it's basically one or two average true ranges away from the previous uh, from the previous close, and look where the previous close were. Uh, at this point, we were two average true ranges away from the lows here, and this week we are one average true range away from the previous low. So what I see here is I see buyers coming in here and buying at these levels. So I think that, um, you know, for now, I think the Mexican peso is still in decline against the dollar. And I think uh, we may see a, uh, a surge here uh, within the uh, next few weeks or so. So the weakness in US dollar over the past few weeks in March, basically, uh, was definitely helpful to gold. And here's gold in the daily time frame. So you can see that we're, the dollar was declining throughout March here, and gold uh, took advantage of it. Finally, here in um, just a few last the last days, looks like uh, the dollar is rallying, and gold is under pressure. In fact, gold is under pressure at the resistance levels, and this could be like a double top uh, from February highs and now March highs. Also, the, additionally, the 200-day moving average is in this area. So if the dollar continues higher, gold will come under pressure. Um, here's that same uh, uh, resistance level, uh, double top, possible double top, that I'm watching here on, on the weekly time frame. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a choppy chart and it's a difficult chart, honestly. Uh, so maybe this is a resistance level already, and maybe this is where we're, you know, we'll find that um, this rally will peter out. Um, longer term, um, I still think we are in a bull market for gold. Uh, I think bull market for gold start, started somewhere around uh, March of. 2016 and this is one of my proprietary indicators gold breadth index uh, it is still bullish in fact uh, if we at the very least trade sideways and possibly slightly up at least not down we may get an improvement in this uh, overall indicator to uh, to three uh, this could happen as early as next week and maybe even a week after as long as we're at the very least not drop from here because if we drop, then we can actually get significantly worse. In fact, I'll, I'll show it to you um, on the, some of the market breadth indicators for GDX. So here is GDX uh, gold market uh, gold miners ETF on the daily time frame. 
Uh, this is a choppy and difficult chart and I would actually discourage new traders from trading it. Um, there are much easier charts, for example, for regular stocks. Uh, gold is notoriously difficult to trade. Um, however, if you so desire, uh, there are obviously available vehicles and GDX is one of those. So here's what I see on this chart. Um, we had 52 week highs back in August or so of last year. And since then we're basically making lower uh, lows and lower highs. Finally, it looks like we're making a higher low here in March, um, unless we don't, unless we continue lower from here, which again is very much possible. The reason why I think it's possible is because uh, dollar could rally from here, gold will come under pressure, and together with that, um, gold miners will come under pressure as well. So here is the advanced decline lines for uh, gold miners. Right now I don't see any major issues with it. Uh, looks like we're making a higher lows. Um, no divergences that I am seeing on this chart. Uh, but nothing very you know strong either it's kind of like a moderate chart i guess and i mean this was a big surge and for now we're holding here but um you know if the dollar decides to rally this could be really bad for uh, gdx because these are going to be 52 week lows if we get there so here is GDX in the weekly time frame, and here are those uh, 2016 December lows. If we break below them, then we'll we'll make fresh lows, and that's not a good sign uh, for uh, any security. Here are my uh, some of my proprietary indicators uh, for gold and gold miners GDX on the daily time frame. Um, this is what, again, all uh, this, uh, this and this are all proprietary indicators. So this is a shorter term um, momentum indicator, I guess. And it needs to, it's a, it's a breadth indicator, but it has, uh, it became bearish here in October. And so far it has not flipped bullish. We need to see a move above 90 and it didn't happen. So we came very close to 8750, but it didn't, get above 90 so so far we haven't gotten there yet additionally the another one of the inputs for the total gba uh, gold breath index <clears throat> the raw data continued to drop so we are now only at 3750 and the bearish trigger is 20 so that's very close um so this is a you know, if we continue even sideways to slightly down, I have a feeling we could we could flip into bear market. And you know, it's 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 just very difficult. To, you know, it, it's possible that we're gonna go higher, but it's also very much possible that we can simply just a few points lower and we'll flip into bear market. So um, gold is looking a little better. Um, but market breadth is uh, for gold miners is looking actually worse. So it's kind of like in between. If this double top actually is a double top, I think gold will be done for. And we may see fresh lows. Um, however, if we at the very least trade sideways to slightly up and maybe even break above the double top here, uh, maybe gold will, uh, you know, save itself, so to speak. Here's oil on the daily time frame. So uh, a couple of weeks ago in beginning of March, we had, uh, I think we had a support break basically here. Um, even though this are 52 week highs, I have really strong doubts that this is a bullish security. Um, and I don't normally look at fundamental uh, supplies, you know, fundamentals. I, I mostly look at technical analysis, but occasionally it does, you know, it's occasionally it's helpful. And I think that fundamentally oil is in a downtrend, and the reason being is because there's just a glut of oil in the in the world. And when countries are trying to cut production, this is not a good sign for a commodity. 
So uh, here we had a uh, breakdown, support break. Uh, we actually took this trade at Master Chess Trading. Maybe I'll show the trade next week. Uh, but we did short oil uh, somewhere around this area here in, in January. I don't remember exactly where, but I'll show this trade next week. Uh, and it did play out. We got two targets uh, uh, that were met, took some profits, and then uh, closed the trade. Uh, right now, I don't have any positions because oil is sort of nowhere. It's not really overbought, not really oversold. It's somewhere in between. On the weekly time frame, this is the reason why I'm still very reluctant to call this a bullish chart. It's because we had big drop, bounce, big drop, bounce, big drop. So we got as low as $26 here in February of 2016. Went on a big rally here, but then looks like we consolidated here um, from November till March. Of this year for 12 weeks finally with a bearish resolution so right now i still think that we had the uh, support break and a bearish resolution to this trading range and i think that this bounce um, will eventually be stopped i don't know exactly know where obviously and nobody really knows but my best guess is it will get up somewhere somewhere in the vicinity of 50 354 dollars and i think the shorts will come in again um, but for now uh, oil may continue higher in fact here is xle the energy etf and this is heavily oil um, produ producers uh, and uh, you know the refiners etc so uh, it's pretty Pretty extremely oversold because this is 52 week highs, which is continued to unravel here. Um, this is a significant move lower from 77 to 67 dollars or so. Now we're surging here, so I wonder, you know, if we will, um, you know, basically maybe trade sideways and then surge again, especially if oil decides to go higher. Uh, what worried me here uh, was the advanced decline lines making lower lows with a bearish divergence. You can see a higher low here on XLE in March, but lower lows um, on the advanced decline lines. But it is quite extremely oversold right now, so it would make sense to rally uh, for XLE, at the very least a um, relief rally. Um, Another interesting point of uh, another interesting point that I found here is um, this is a weekly chart going back 18 years for various uh, stock funds and this is um, several here. So we have black is S&P 500, utilities in orange, real estate, energy, consumer staples, and uh, these are the most uh, uncorrelated funds to the general market. So I was looking for most un most a least correlation, so to speak. So here, XLE, you can see correlation in a 20-week correlation. In fact, this week it became the most uncorrelated it has ever been in the history of existence, because uh, XLE was uh, inception was back here in 2099, uh, I think. So right now, XLE is extremely uncorrelated to the general market, and I don't know what this means. Um, does it mean that we will now turn around the entire market will continue lower from here or does it mean that um, uh, XLE will turn around and continue higher to catch up to the general market what do you guys think uh, you know reply below basically and make you know in the comments um, my feeling is that there could be some kind of a fundamental issue with this uh, to begin with so maybe oil is no longer that important for the general market uh, before when oil was extremely important uh, we, we, you know it would make sense for uh, stocks to be moving up together with oil but in our days because we have glut of oil um, and also oil is not as much of importance to the you know, manufacturers, etc. And the, I think the most important thing is that we have just a glut of oil and we can produce it with fracking and with horizontal drilling, etc. New drilling methods. So 
Additionally, um, you know, there are other alternative sources of energy. There is solar, there is wind. I mean, I know it's still not the big deal, but there's also natural gas. So it's all it's all weighing on oil. And I wonder now if this poor correlation is going to become the norm. Because you know normally you can see XLE is pretty well correlated with the general market, but nowadays it looks like it's un it's been un it's uncorrelated. So again I wonder what this means. Um and if you have any ideas uh, do comment below. And finally, here is natural gas. Um, this is a daily chart. So very volatile. I, I continue to stress that this is not for the faint of heart and not for new traders. And uh, there are other securities that you could trade with equal or much better results. Uh, very volatile, uh, big gaps. Um, you know, big moves. Uh, now, um, this chart I think is bullish uh, because this is a 52 week highs. We had a breakout. I'll show in the weekly chart. Um, we came down all the way to almost all the way to the breakout level here in February and then rallied. And I, it looks to me like we're continuing with this rally. It looks like we're just moving higher. Uh, weekly, uh, this is a uh, longer term time frame. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, we bottomed out here in March of last year and moved higher. Here we had a breakout above previous highs. Uh, here where I started treating uh, natural gas as bullish. And uh, we did uh, several trades here at Master Charts, and um, some of them were successful, some were not successful. But again, um, this much more, um, much more volatile, so you're going to have less success rate, basically. So I would actually discourage new traders from trading it. But uh, again, I think this is a bullish chart, and we're continuing higher. Maybe we'll trade a little bit sideways and then continue higher. Um, that's it for this week's recap. If you have any comments, uh, please do comment below. Of course, share this video with other uh, people uh, or friends who might benefit from it. And sign up at masterchastrain.com. Um, by the way, I wanted to mention that most likely the prices will be going up. So um, I would highly suggest you go ahead and uh, sign up at Master Chess Trading for Trade Alert Services. Um, right now it's still relatively cheap. It's only $24.95 per month and you get to see uh, what I'm buying, what I'm selling. There's lots of, welcome, there's lots of um, uh, members only content. Most importantly, importantly there is a risk. Uh, and trading psychology. Also, there is trend identification, several videos here I would highly recommend. Uh, also, uh, you get in the members only area, there is lots of members only content. Um, of course, my positions, uh, actionable ideas, and of course, members only blog. And additionally, there is a weekly members only video that I produce for the members. Um, only. Uh, also, I have a foreign stocks uh, section as well that is included with each uh, daily update and um, there are alerts that are being sent out. So far, I'm, get, I'm getting really good um, um, feedback from the subscribers, so do consider signing up. That's it for this week's recap. Thanks for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.